Michael. As the bull struggled to survive, Wall Street's biggest bull is backing down. He just slashed his 2019 S&P 500 target to 29.25 from 33.50 after a brutal month. Let's bring in Jonathan Gall of Chief U.S. Equity Strategist for Credit Suisse. Jonathan, good to have you with us. Good to be here. Is it fair to say you backed down? You know, I, I have to say, I hate lowering this target because I am not seeing fund, I'm not seeing fundamentals deteriorating. And, and I just want to say, there is no question we're going to see the economy slow down. That's not even a question. I think that that's well understood. But if you look at, you know, I think that that's baked into the earnings. Next year, we're going to see uh, we have 6 to 7 percent EPS growth. Not fantastic, but good enough. And if we have the Fed done, which I think is what we're going to find out either soon or either very soon or somewhat soon, that plus 6 or 7 percent EPS growth, I think, is enough for this to get the market back on better f footing as long as nothing goes wrong. Okay. So, yes, am I still bullish? Yes, but, so, I, but yes, I'm, I have so to take can, it down. Can I ask you to pull the curtain back in terms of how Whoa. you strategists come okay. up with these year-end targets? Because sure. I'm assuming, or I always thought growing up, that you had models <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> plugged up. in, you know, what earnings, what you thought earnings would be for right. next year, et cetera. Has that changed or has it simply been the market pulled back in the month of December and you said we are going to return X percent and so therefore I have to re-rate my price by the way, a 13 year old Melissa so, so, probably was thinking about it. No ec doubt. Economic <laughs> models, by the way. It's a compliment, I think. But, no, so, but, so let's start with the earnings. Um, we've, we're not changing our numbers at all. We, we model them based on what the expectation for the economy is, and it's slower. We modeled that lower oil already was going to take a little bit of a, about a 1.5% off of the earnings because it's, that's, uh, that's negative. Buybacks are going to continue to be strong you know, one and a half percent from buybacks, we get something that's like, you know, like I said, six to seven percent, which is not brilliant, but is probably OK. Um, and valuations, if you look at the cost of capital, 10 year bond yield is down, which offsets some of the spread widening that we've had. The cost of capital is still really cheap and recessionary risk right now. I mean, we talk about weakness. The ISM has been printing close to 60. We're not going into recession. So I think the market rates, I have, as much as I lowered my number, 15% upside on a number, which, which is a lot lower than what I thought it would be. Or so, to Jonathan, be. when you're talking about, you see news like FedEx, which is, I would say, some sort of a barometer, bellwether, and Micron, perhaps. Sure. How do you think about that in terms of your earnings forecast? Because tomorrow the market's going to say they're going to rate everybody lower because of what FedEx did. Right. So I look at a couple of things. One is... I, I look at where I think the earnings would be based on, like I said, economic drivers. And then separately, we take all the Wall Streets, all the analysts across Wall Street, not just the Credit Suisse guys, but the consensus. And I look at what are they doing and how are they revising their numbers. And right now, the revisions are like very normal. Like it's not like analysts are slashing uh, their numbers. And if they are, it's probably because they're seeing the market going down and feel you know, no different than with me with my numbers. I, I got to cut something here. Maybe I'm too optimistic. Um, but we're not seeing analysts wholesale cutting their numbers yet. But, but you, you've cut 425 S&P points at, you know, relative to an S&P at, you know, 2550 it's, right it's, now. It's a 12 percent so, so, or something like that. Yep. Which, okay. is, which is basically what the but market But you say it's all because of volatility? I mean, largely. Yeah. And here's what I think risk. is going to and here's what I think is going to happen. You know, I think the VIX will be in three, four, five months from now will be below 15. I think that that causes um, equities to re-rate. I think the Fed is going to tell you they're done. I think that causes things to re-rate. And I think you have an okay but good enough earnings backdrop. And I think that that gives you a double-digit uh, you know, double number. So when you, when you look at it, the cost of capital is going up. We talked about it at the top of the show when you, we burn into $50 billion per month. No matter how you slice it, the cost of capital is right, so going up. So let me, start with, let me start on that. Companies have termed out, out their debt. So you have um, the amount of short-term debt on, on corporate balance sheets is the lowest it's ever been in history compared to long-term debt because they realized that they were never going to get better than this, and they termed it out. So the Fed can move the short rate up. It may help so it taking, may hurt somebody, but not most. So taking the corporations out of it, and when right. you look at what the banks are telling us with the story, well, you have portions of yield curves that have inverted, whether you look at threes, fives, now you look at twos, tens that are damn near close to it. Right. Doesn't that give you the heads up when you look at sell-side banks that are sort of late, and, and I'm, I, I'm trying not to make this an insult, but every dip is, a, is worth buying. 
It just seems like every sell side no. bank will come on and say every dip is worth no, buying. I mean, so, on that, so listen, there's there's a whole bunch of things that can go wrong, and if I see them going badly, I'll 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 take a bearish view. So first, let me start with. So let's talk about the bear case. I think Donald Trump is in this trade thing for way longer than we think. So as much as I'm optimistic, so people were talking three weeks ago, are we going to get a deal at the G20? No. If the Chinese gave him something early, he'd say, all right, fine, that's a starting, that's a starting of the negotiation. Let's do better. What he realizes right now, Europe is actually piling on and saying we think that Trump is right on this, and they want to get in on a better deal with China. So I think that we're going to be living with this for a while. Is it how much GDP does it take off? 20 basis points, 10, 30. Right now, the economy is fine. I, I think that it's going to continue to be noise. Is it going to be a problem? It may be. Right now, I think it's just going to be noise. So that's number one. Number two, we have a tight labor market. There's a chance that as much as the Fed wants to be out of this, that inflation can pull them back in. If that happens, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to come on here and say, I'm slash my numbers, but now I really mean it. Now I'm really negative on things. So those, to me, were probably the two biggest things. Am I concerned about this removal of liquidity from the Fed? I don't think it's a problem, but we don't know. We've never had, give me a case to look at that looks like this. I, you know, I don't think it is, but, you know, but that could be a problem as well. So there's a bunch of things. Um, overall, though, I think the backdrop with the Fed out, mm -hmm. no recession, a little bit slower growth, I'm okay. Jonathan, thank you. Jonathan right. Golub, Credit Suisse. All right. It's up so, to guys, me. I mean, I'd like I, I, don't, I, I do not envy the Wall Street strategists these days. SunTrust, in fact, coming out today saying that we're not going to publish a year end target. Oh, come on. It's really? treacherous to that, publish year end targets these have days. A, take a view. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a view and defending it. People don't necessarily, they applaud you for taking a view and having cogent arguments and not necessarily always having to be right. At so. least you know directionally where somebody stands. But anyway, Guy. Well, I think Steve brings up the $50 billion that's coming off the Fed's balance sheet every month. Tim mentioned this last night. He talked about $600 billion for the year. I mean, the easiest thing to do when you're trading or putting on a prop trade is getting into the trade. The hardest thing to do is getting out. And that's what the Fed's trying to do. And they're trying to do it in an elegant fashion not to disrupt the markets can't happen. Almost by no definition, way. it can't happen. And I think, to yeah. your point, that's a big problem. To Jonathan's point quickly about the yeah. VIX getting to 15, a lot of things better happen for the VIX to get to 15, because on a day when the S&P was up significantly, as was the Dow, the VIX was actually up on the day. So the VIX is telling a little bit of a different story right now.